prepare to die. Hey, what's happening gamers? Welcome to the first video review of the new year. This year, aside from Retro Mondays, I'm doing something a bit different as far as reviews go. I'll be looking at the games that I want to do, whether they be AAA, AA, B, or crappy games, and in between, it really doesn't matter. To kick things off, we're taking a look at Oni Chambra Bikini Zombie Slayers for the Nintendo Wii, a mature rated game and a good one at that. In case you're all wondering, the series got its start in Japan on the PS2 back in 2004. Since then, the series has spawned eight games and localized only two, Vortex for the 360 and Revolution for the Wii. So join me on this spooky Friday the 13th as we grab our swords and carve up some zombies. So just sit back and relax, put on your poncho, and prepare for a splatterfest more messy than a Gallagher show. Now the game story starts off right at the end of Vortex, or Bikini Zombie Squad, where Aya and Saki have defeated that evil witch for the last time. Hopefully, anyway. The two sisters thought that the nightmare had ended and that they could finally be at peace, hoping to have forever closed the book on their baneful blood. However, their new lives would have to wait, as one night the zombies have reawakened to cause panic in Tokyo once more. It's up to the two sisters to find out why this is happening and to stop their own inner demons from consuming them. Will Eia and Saki be able to control their evil blood, or are they doomed to annihilate one another? You'll have to play this twisted tale to find out. In case you're all wondering, Bikini Zombie Slayers for the Nintendo Wii is a hack and slash game, where the whole point of the game is to slay zombies, of course! In all honesty, I haven't had this much fun killing zombies since, well, zombies ate my neighbors. Now, the main character of the series is Aya, the cowgirl bikini-wearing samurai babe. Anyway, Bikini Zombie Slayers features multiple game modes. They are Story Mode, which acts as the main campaign for the game where you can pick your character and play through a series of story-based events. Free Play allows players to replay any level of their choice and has up to five difficulties. In Free Play, you can go solo or switch between a second character at any time during the fray. Or you can play co-op with a friend using the split screen. Which I have to say wasn't too bad, though playing with a second player is what makes it a lot of fun. The survival mode is an arena-based series of challenges that pits the player against a lot of dead people. Once again, you can play solo, switch between two characters on the fly, and survival lasts until, well, you're dead! This mode also allows you to tackle it with a partner. Just keep in mind you both share the same items, and if your pal dies, well, they're gone for the rest of the game. The quests become unlocked in both free play and survival. Also, each character has up to 30 quests they can complete. The reason why you want to do these quests is so you can unlock additional costumes for each of your slayers. Stocking up on items is very important to heal yourself, and defeating the blood zombies will reward your character with a special ring, which each of the rings actually gives the girls unique abilities. This game also has a level up system where you can go from 0 to 100 and allows for a brief customization, like picking the type of skill you want to level up. Still, the whole point of this game is to kill a football field, no, a subway full of zombies and look good doing it. Man, I would hate to be their dry cleaner though. Talk about messy. Rather than explain the game's controls in vast detail, I decided to be wicked lazy and just show the game's tutorial pictures. Why? Because I can, that's why. I have to say though, the gameplay for this game is great, especially when compared to Vortex. Just remember, while you're in hack and slash heaven, it's important for you to evade your enemy's attacks, since there's no way to block in this game at all, although evading is easy and simple to pull off. I was also impressed with this game the fact that it wasn't really a waggle game. In fact, in order to chain combos together successfully, you need to move the Wiimote up and down in precise movements, and it's easiest just to pretend you're holding a sword so you can execute the swings correctly. Of course, each character has a unique moveset and controls differently than the other. A good example of this is Saki, whom replaces much of her sword combat with just her fists. Like before, she can grab and throw enemies, and this is done by running into them and shaking both the Wiimote and Nunchuck. New to this game is Saki's ability to punch the undead, which is awesome and a lot of fun. 
Ryoko also has a different control scheme than the other girls, though she too features long-range weapons, but they aren't unlimited like the others. One great thing about Ryoko is the fact you actually use the Wiimote to aim and then fire with the B button, so you really get to see how that gun combat works. In terms of the game's graphics, believe it or not, this game is a step up from the past 360 game. Not only are the visuals better, but so are the character models. Then again, Vortex was an early 360 game, but it still managed to have really great cutscenes, amazing backgrounds, and better blood effects too. Things that this game is severely lacking. However, while this game isn't going to win any beauty contests, it does make up for it with its presentation. Then again, most of the game looks like its level design isn't even PS2 quality. I can understand that gamers hated the way Vortex visuals were. Still, I don't think that's an excuse to punish Wii owners. Which brings me into the things that I didn't like about this game. First off, my minor gripe, which has to do with the language. Why is the option for it only in Japanese? It's not that it sounds bad, mind you, but I would have liked the option at least to hear the bad English dubbed version so I could follow what's going on better. I can understand if this game just released in Japan and then was ported within a few months for the Western world. But we know that wasn't the case because Oni Chambra had been out for almost two years in Japan before it was localized here. Next, the cutscenes are super lame in this game. I really believe the developers could have done a much better job and utilized cutscenes for the Wii because the Wii is capable of using cutscenes as we've seen from later games. In terms of the game's combat engine, well, not being able to defend yourself was incredibly bothersome. Frankly, for a sword game, this was downright offensive to say the least. Another thing that really irks me about this game is the fact the girls can't jump onto cars or reach higher locations using their double jumps. What is this? A 90s PlayStation game? Come on! This is so 15 years ago and uncalled for for any, and I mean any, current gen gaming system. While I'm on this rant, my biggest gripe about this game has to be it takes itself way too seriously. I mean, for crying out loud, folks, it's girls in bikinis slaying zombies. I mean, it should be a laugh riot, and it's so not. Alright, I know what you're thinking. Does this game have any redeeming qualities? And the answer is yes. Yes, it does. For starters, the developer Tamsoft really did improve the game's pacing, arena fighting, gameplay, and of course its controls which actually makes this Oni Chambara game one of the best in the series. In terms of sound and music, sound effects are pretty average and at times very laughable, though music was very well done in my personal opinion. However, there is one stage that really didn't fit the game's overall score, and that was the hospital. But other than that, I really loved the different character themes because they sounded really cool. I didn't really mention this before, but gameplay for this game rocks. Controls are very simple to use, and it doesn't take too long to learn the super moves either. Items were a great addition too, and come in very handy. Even though they're only limited in number, these items will restore you back to full health and remove your baneful blood from cursing you. Another fun addition was being able to change the color of the zombie's blood. This is great because if the blood and gore is getting a bit much for you, then just change the color. I actually preferred using green because it had a more B-monster movie vibe to it, which I loved. Though now that I'm thinking about this, the zombie's blood wouldn't be red anyway, since I'm positive no oxygen is running through those veins anymore. As far as the characters go, I really liked playing as Aya because of her dual swords and unlimited knives to throw, Saki because she could actually falcon punch zombies, and lastly Ryoko because it was a blast to shotgun zombies to death. Oh wait, they're already dead aren't they? Never mind. Oh, before I forget, there was one important thing I forgot to mention. When your sword becomes filled with monster goo, make sure you clean it off by holding in A button and shaking the Wiimote. That way you can resume more slicing and dicing goodness very soon. Out of all the modes to play, survival is a lot of fun. In truth, this is the mode me and the missus actually played a lot. It was very addictive and fun. Though if you really want to get the most out of this game, then you have to play it on the Berserk difficulty. Because here you will fight wave after wave of zombies, plus if you're at a very high level, then they aren't defeated as easily. This means you can pull off some really insane combos. Now while the super moves do remove some of your life, the ecstasy move is even more powerful and a lot more fun to execute. Although the only problem is, yeah, you might go into rage mode. No, not that rage mode. 
Rage mode only happens if your character has too much blood on them. Still, many people love this mode because your character is uber strong and wicked fast. All in all though, I have to say that this game is pretty choice. It has high replay value, 5 difficulties, unlockable characters, additional costumes, and it's multiplayer too. Not to mention for the $15 price point, it can easily become a simple and affordable guilty pleasure for most gamers. Man, it has a lot of blood though, trust me. So if you're old enough to actually play M-rated games, I suggest checking out this fun hack and slash gem for the Nintendo Wii. Well, thus wraps up another video review. Keep checking back for a variety of content that my wife and I provide on a daily basis six times a week. If you're new to our stuff and liked what you saw, please subscribe as it's free for you and good for us. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video and until we meet again gamers, God bless and happy gaming. Have an epic rest of your day.